To start off, there is three things you need to know in order to do what you're wanting to do with the Discord bot. Being able to communicate between multiple servers requires a few specific things to help make your program run efficiently as the bot is doing all the commands. The three things you do need to know about is how dynamic arrays work, the base, a basic understanding of how the JDA works, and how threading works. Thank you. Those are the three things you do need to know about. And there's going to be a few assumptions that this video is going to take as I go through this. First, it's going to assume that you have a basic understanding of how Java works. The next assumption is you have the JDA installed and ready to go on Eclipse or whatever you're using. If these two assumptions are untrue, you might need to back out and either learn more about Java or try to get, uh, I have some links in the description that could help you get the JDA on Eclipse, which is annoying and a headache, but you'll get used to it and hopefully get through it. So, if all of this is okay with you, then we can get started here. Now, of course, in order to use the JDA, we have to get it started and import it. This is the run.java, this is the main uh, method here. And I know it's on the default package, but I'm using a default package, I don't care. Just no worth noting that when you're working on this, you can write your code however you please. The JDA is flexible. However, it's worth noting that you gotta be careful. So this is gonna be a little basic. So first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to import something. It's going to be uh, net evasion in JDA. And we're going to core star. Pretty sure that's right. That should uh, give us what we need to do because we need to deal with the um, JDA builder. So now we need to create the main method. So. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to have a bot. These are your applications, and you can go to your applications through discordapp.com, developers, the applications. We're going to create a new application. The name is going to be bot. Create. Now, our application is currently made. Right now this is very basic, and there's not really much going on. And as it stands, this bot does not actually exist yet. We still need to create it. So let's just go ahead and do that for now. Save changes. Now we need to add the bot. Yes, do it. So now it has that tutorial token. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and copy this token because you need this token. Now that you've created your bot, we're going to go ahead and create the JDA builder. Okay, so it's JDA API is equal to new JDA builder. Hoping I'm doing this right. Which okay. JDA builder dot set token and then you paste in your token build. This should be right. And of course, lastly we want to do is just do throws exception. There you go. Now your bot's created. This right here, JDA API, is a new JDA builder, set token, dot build. This pretty much sets everything up for your bot and now can be launched. Once this is made, it will launch. The next thing you need to do is add an event listener, and we'll be building that. So this is the first step. This is the basic stuff. You should already know this if you have experience with the JDA. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to create an event listener. In this uh, event listener, you can just call event listener. Now we have the event listener, what we need to do is we need to import net division JDA core hooks and we need to import the listener adapter. This is an, uh, this is an um, 
abstract class that we need to import in order to uh, listen. The listener adapter allows the bot to listen for the stuff you already know this, at least you should. Next, we're going to import net activation. Uh, we're going to import the ability to type, JDA core uh, message. Message. This is not working. Events. Message. Message received event. There we go. Then we're going to uh, extend the listener adapter. Perfect. Now, that is listening. This is good. Next, what we need to do is create something that overwrites message received event because message received event has an abstract method that allows us to uh, make the program do whatever happens when a message is received by the bot. And we're going to do this by doing public void on message received. And it's going to say message received i before e except under c event event. And there. And as you can tell, this little triangle means it's an abstract, it's a overwriting an abstract uh, method. So now, once a message is received by the bot, there you go. Next thing we need to do here, this is where things start getting into a whole ordeal about whatever. So, what we want to do is have a couple of classes. The first things first, before I continue, I should mention, this video is meant to help you understand the basics of how this is going to work later on. This is not going to be the actual code you want to write to make this work. I still recommend you watch this. Don't skip ahead to the next part because this is still some important information here that I won't likely won't mention again. So, what we're going to do now. Right here we have on message received, and there's going to be a user who sends that message. Message received event has uh, is, is an object that has some important information that we do need to use. So I'm also remembering I need to make this public class. Sorry, I've been writing with C++ for a little bit. I forgot about this. Public class. There we go. Perfect. For the sake of simplicity, we're just, we're just going to have this inside the event listener. There we go. And we'll board private channel. Now, what this is, is it is a... Um, public uh, global scope uh, it's a global scope uh, variable and this class is going to be responsible for holding something very essential to making this program work because right now what we're trying to do is make it to where as long as the user is inside a discord server that has the bot inside of it you will be able to receive messages from the bot and send messages to the bot in private DMs and this is what this is private channel is a message channel so, now, what we're going to do is when a message is sent, there's a few things we're going to do with that message. So, on message received, what we need to do is take event, and we're going to need to get the author. And then, we're going to open private channel. Now, if you queue this, it's a rest action, and it returns a rest action object. What this means is, when the uh, when you try and open the private channel, it needs to be queued through Discord. Discord has a queue system that does everything through the internet, and it puts everything in a queue, kind of like a uh, line, like from school, if you're in a line going somewhere. That queue is going to go one by one, doing every single thing, step by step, which means it will not execute open private channel right away. This is what this queue is for. Now when you do queue, what happens is, is that this will not slow down your program. It will just simply run this method and then put it inside the queue for Discord. And now it's queued. And now you don't have to worry. The problem is, is that you do not get the channel. What you can do 
is once it's done queue, once uh, it opens private channel, you can then try and send a message uh, by. Uh, well, first you need to. Oh no, you can't even do that. Once you queue, that's it. You're done. So pretty much all you're doing is just opening the private channel, which is fine. You can do that. But I really would not recommend it doing it this way. What you want to do instead is complete. Dot complete. You notice that complete returns private channel. Instead of returning void, it actually returns private channel. Here's a problem. When you do the complete method, it blocks the current thread it's being run in. When you call the complete method, it will block your thread until the queue is complete because of the way complete works. Pretty much how it works is complete is the exact same as queue. It will put your request into the queue and once that request is next on the line in the line, it will execute that uh, request on Discord's end. However, if you use complete, it will block your current thread until that queue is finished and Discord successfully executes that request. This is a very big issue because the only way to get the channel object is if you do complete. That way you can actually get it. But that means that if you're doing this on the main thread, it slows your bot down. It, it slows your bot down unnecessarily. This is where threading comes in, and this is where threading is important, because you need the complete method. That way you can either send messages here, send file, send message, through, through here, or, of course, you can also simply do this. And now, the channel will be stored within the event listener class. And this will be important for later. So, how do we do this? Because right now, what I'm doing is I'm slowing down the bot by a lot. Because, say, for instance, Discord is slow, or someone's internet is slow. That's going to completely slow down your computer. Your computer. That's going to slow down your bot, and that's going to be out of your control. So, what you want to do is use threads. And here's what's going to happen. What you want to do is, personally, what I would do is create a package. It's going to be called threading. This is how I would do it. And I'm going to create a new class called message. Now we have a public class message. What's going to happen is there's going to be a method responsible for handling when that takes place. The great thing about threads in Java is that you don't have to import anything. You can just simply do extends thread. There. Now you have thread. What you then want to do is overwrite the run method. Uh, public void run. And again, you can see that little green triangle again. That means it overrid something. Overridden something. Now, doing it like this, you may notice a small issue. Run does not take any arguments. And when this takes place, it's going to need the event that just took place so we can do get author open private channel. So what you want to do is create a constructor. And this constructor is going to take message received event event. And then this is going to have an error, import the message received event here. What we're going to do is uh, I'm going to do uh, this dot event is equal to event. There you go. That's a constructor. Now we're going to do this. We run. Make it take. Uh, Notice something. One thing you might want to. Uh, okay, hold on. So, on second thought, what you actually want to do is go ahead and just create an object for the bot. So, let's create a new package called bot here. There we go. Do bot. Create a new class. Name it uh, storage for now. 
and this is going to store public static uh, public static it's going to be public static private channel channel I'm just going to put that it. You just need that for right now. So there we go. Now we can do that. So we need to delete this here. We're going to go with story or message. And now we're going to do this. Now that we have a new uh, package named bot with storage, we're going to import. Now we have storage in here. And what we're going to do is when the run method is called, this is going to be a new thread. What we're going to do, next what we're going to do is do storage dot channel is equal to event dot get author dot get uh, dot, dot open private channel dot complete this will store the channel and that's it we're done it does it inside a thread so nothing slows down perfection right so now we've done that and that's all that needs to be taken care of which means this can go bye-bye. So, now we need to go ahead and create this new thread. So, on message receive, message receive event right there. So we're going to do is create a new and that, uh, message. We need to uh, import the thread. So, import threading dot message. We're going to do this. New message. And it's going to take the event dot start. And we need to make this public, apparently. Again, I'm too used to C++. <laughs> now, start. There we go. So what's going to happen is when we run this bot, it is going to uh, get our private channel, and that's it. The great thing about it is it is stored statically, meaning it is just going to be stored inside the storage class the entire time. So. Now that we do this, what we're going to do is do event.get con uh, get get message get content raw. We're going to do a string here. string string.format hi there person s I'm going to go ahead and do uh, so it's a person s event dot get author dot get name okay we can do that it's just a little bit of cleaner formatting anyway uh, so now we have send message that's it we queued it and that's it so what should happen is, when we do exclamation point test, it should be able to send a message to us. To us. So, let's go ahead and run and test this out. So first things first, before we do anything else, we need to go back here to run and do api.addEventListener. We're going to add new event listener. And this is going to be the new event listener here. And then the next thing we're going to do is going to invite our bot to our Discord server. Let me see here. Okay, we go here, bot, bot permissions, administrator. This should do that, I'm pretty sure. I, I really hope so. Copy that, 
go to the next page, copy that and paste that in. There we go, perfect. Okay, now that you've chosen your thing, you're gonna authorize it. I'm gonna say I'm not a robot, I might be. And there we go, now it's authorized. Now it should be in here. See? Now, the tutorial ball is not running yet. We're going to change that, provided everything does not kill itself. So, let's go ahead and run this. Destroy the bot is now online. Awesome. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to go ahead and send a message. Hey there. That just stored my channel. My channel should be stored right now, and it should have stored my private channel too. If it did not store my private channel, that means it failed, and it did not operate correctly. So we're going to go ahead and do test. Oh, hey. It worked. See? Now we have stored the channel. This is good, right? Also, there's apparently <laughs> an error. Okay, so what happened here? You cannot open a private channel with yourself. Apparently, it tried to open a private channel with its own self. That's because we forgot to do the most important thing that you always need to do. I'm apparently stupid. If event that get author is bot return perfection. Now we're gonna need to stop the bot from running and rerun it. Okay, so it's uh, gonna do that. We can also do it here and we do test. There we go. Now there's no error. Good. Now, it's worth mentioning that um, inside the event listener, test comes after the message is started. So if I were to start the bot again, which means it will restart its whatever is stored, and if I do test, there's going to be no error. Oh yes, there is actually, because it's going to be too long. However, if I do it again, There we go, perfect. Okay, now it works. Because remember, it's in a separate thread that's going on when it opens it. So yeah, make sure that it gets the message first. So that's kind of proof of what's going on here. When I start the bot, it doesn't have the private cha channel stored. So when I try and send a message to a private channel, it's a null object, which creates an error. However, now that I have sent test once, it got my channel. So I do test again, it sends there. And of course, if I do that, does that, does that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a uh, hot and then test. There you go. And again, it works in the DMs. And it works in here too. See? And that's how that works. That is the most basic, that is fundamentally the, the single thing you need to understand in order to be able to write code for this bot to be able to communicate between servers and make like a party bot or whatever is to understand how queuing works with discord how the complete function works how threading works and that's it that's all you need to know we will be getting into actually how to actually properly write this code in further tutorials because this will be a tutorial series right now this just serves as a way to make you uh, help you understand how this works and what is supposed to be done and the gist of how it operates it's not that hard it's not that complicated really in fact it probably surprised you how simple it is it's just saving what you need to save and it's kind of loose you would think i would have to store all this information like the user the like string ID. I don't need to do all that. All that is pointless. If you just want to send messages between people, you just need the chat. However, if you want to make things like games, you might need to do more and store more, which we'll get to that later. And if you want a database, you're really going to have to get into more complicated stuff, which again, we'll cover later on. 
for now. That is how this works. It's how everything functions properly. And that's all you need to do. All you need to know. Thank you for watching.